You wake up in the morning and decide you're putting this on the agenda. You're the one who's put us all in this position. You're talking about me? Yeah. I know how it got put on the agenda. So you I'm did saying, it. Talking. All of a sudden, I'm Tommy talking. Tommy Rosano put something on the agenda. It's Tommy's idea, so he's virtually against it. Obviously, everybody knows what happened with their former chief. I sat there talking to the, the headhunter, because you can use that word, and he asked me, you know, what was I looking for? I, right away, I said, you know what? I got the guy that I'm looking for. So I asked for this item to be put on. The freeze on the uh, looking, the, the, the go, moving forward with, with the new chief, the, with the headhunter. And I just don't think we should be making the chief's position a permanent one if the permanency could be a very short time. What I feel is the importance of hiring from outside. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm not ready to make him chief tonight. I will go against my gut and strongly consider it. Where were we on the search? It has not gone live. It's not out there. There's no candidates. I made a promise that we would not promote from within. Give him the damn job. We're going to make you chief. We've been burned in the past. We thought we made the right decisions in the past. And all we're asking for is a little bit more time. I will make a motion that we make chief. Palmer, Chief. Okay. You, 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 the motion is not necessarily consistent, and I don't like to step on the mayor's toes, but you have a motion to suspend the search for three months, so that's not necessarily germane to the motion that you made. So since you have a motion on the table, you can ask the maker of the motion to remove that motion and see if they would accept your motion instead. So, but if that motion passes, I could still make the motion? Yeah, I mean, it's, regardless. because you're making the motion to suspend the search for okay. three months doesn't mean you, that just, you can't make this the motion that you made after afterward. Gotcha. Okay, we have everybody's light lit now. Vice Mayor. I think it's unfortunate that if someone doesn't agree or has some questions, they're demonized sitting up here. I think it's great that all those people have come to speak to you. I don't know if they've come to speak to the rest of us. And with my comments, conversation with the city manager, who told me Tuesday, yesterday, that he had no dog in this race one way or the other, it's a little concerning now to hear, regardless of what his opinion is, but that's not what I heard. No one said that Chief Palmer, in fact, as part of a conversation when we were gonna hire someone, it was specifically said that he could apply if he wanted it. No one's putting his life on hold. This, is a, this entire thing is discussion as to whether or not we should put our search on hold. Never was it intended, from my understanding, to discuss getting him a job right now. But I'm going to say something he's not going to like. As much as I like Mike, as long as he's been in this department, he has been second in command to some people who should never have gotten the job. Unless I'm mistaken, no one ever stops someone underneath, especially in that position, from coming to the city manager if he sees how horrible they were treated and saying, listen, it doesn't, I'm not trying to, to undermine the person I work for, but there are some real problems. I don't know that that ever happened until we wound up getting involved in it. You can't sit in a position that long and not see some of the problems. And I would have felt better hearing that they were noticed before now. And if you don't understand what I'm saying to you, they, they didn't, the former two chiefs, it didn't come from a clear blue sky. Other people had to see what was going on. Other people had to see females were not being treated well. Some of those people held a great deal of rank and yet nobody said anything. So I consider that as well, because it shouldn't be just because you now have the job that you now see the problems. They were either there before or they weren't. They didn't just crop up under John Shaw or Joe Galaska. And if they did, then those people who served on top should have said something. The police department says, see something, say something. So. I have no problem suspending it for the six months that the additional three will be. But I am not sitting here right now to give this job to anyone in less than three months because the same people who may have talked to you need to talk to me. He needs to tell me what's going on because all I know of is one person being taken care of. But this is a systemic problem. If it's a broken department, it isn't because of one person or two people. 
It's an inherent problem. And so I'd like to see what the plan is. I'm glad that you had the opportunity. I haven't. And I don't want to sit with five more females that tell me what a mistake I made again for what may be changed, that's great. Then, then share it with the rest of us. That's all that needs to be done. But I'm not sitting here tonight giving a job to anyone because <clears throat> that was not what's on the commission, uh, uh, on our uh, agenda tonight. It's suspending something, fine, suspend it. But I'd like to hear all the great things going on because that shouldn't be a tightly held secret to the people who are now sitting here to, that hire, fire, or discipline. It doesn't work for us, but certainly either the city manager or someone else should share with us the difference that, that's made for these people to be here. Because I will tell you, less than three months ago, the difference was sitting out there to want to get rid of somebody and go outside. So I need to understand the difference. Okay, yeah, I just, I, I, Anne, I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to go to something you said. Sure, go ahead. I put this on the agenda not to suspend the contract. But that's what I was told. That is exactly what I said. What to I add it told. on, but it doesn't. It's regardless. But what you just said about the chief, you said that he knew stuff was going on. No, I said I don't. know. No, no, no. You said you said not. you knew, and he didn't do nothing about it. He never went to the city manager. That's not going to change, regardless if you believe he did that or not. That's not going to change, and from what you're saying. What so I so in three is, months I from now, what that. is that going to change? So in other words, the there's a chain of command in the police department, I'm assuming, you go to your superior. Right. So you're basically saying, don't go to your superior, go hire, go to a commissioner, no. go to a city manager. Yeah. I'm asking, what did you expect him to do under his chief? Go directly to him if you saw something and is that, that the was chain really, of Is that how it works? You don't swallow something that's wrong just because there's a chain of command. I don't want to put you on the we'll spot, Kale. Yeah. Right. However, we're, we're talking about all sorts of different hypotheticals, right? And and if there's, you know, a, a chief is committing some sort of fraud or crime or or you know, you know, creating issues like that, then then yes, they would be expected to you know report that to me. Issues within the department, operational issues, should be handled through the chain of command. And if the morale okay. is that so, bad, should it no, not but, 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 but we, get I'm going to go back to what you said. You said that he knew something was going to no, elaborate. I said I Let us know what you knew that nobody else here knew. I said I would hope that he would have gone if that, if that was something he was aware of. You specifically said you knew he knew some, something was going on. No, I said. Go back and okay. listen. So I, I would, would like to know what you are suggesting it. that he knew of so we can all get it out in the open. I'm simply saying if the morale was that horrible under two chiefs, I would have hoped somebody would have gone and stepped above and said, this is a broken department. You need to know about it. And that did happen. Then that's the first time you're telling it to me. That is not the first time I told all of you that. Okay. All right, Anka. Right. Commissioner Kajian. You know, a week ago, this wasn't an issue. The chief was the interim chief. The chief is making changes. Changes are happening. Good changes are happening. People are getting happier. You wake up in the morning and decide you're putting this on the agenda. You're the one who's putting the chief on a three to six month hold that he would never, this conversation wouldn't have happened. He would have continued doing what he does every day. You're the one who's put us all in this position and now you're upset because we're not just bowing down and saying, give him the job did, immediately. Did you say, you're talking about me? Yeah. Okay, I'll come you wake up in the morning, you say, oh, I'm going to put it on the agenda. That's not what it was. Yeah, you don't, okay. I know how it got put on the agenda. So you did it. Of course I did it. Okay. I you put it on the agenda. Me. And then you do all of a sudden, well, and now, hey, excuse is, me, I'm talking. Tommy Rizzano, all of a sudden, I'm Tommy talking. Tommy Rosano put something on the agenda. It's Tommy's idea, so he's virtually against it. I didn't say Always. that. Oh, no, 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 and no. That's no. why, Mike, you know what? I apologize for doing this, but at some point, it's going to have to come out. And you see the way these people are? It's because ah, it's the way these people, it is. No, it's not a personal Come agenda. On, three months it's it. not a personal After agenda. Everything. You assume it's a personal agenda. I've spoken to Mike about this one-on-one -on -one many times. Okay. It has nothing to do. What happened to do is, like I said, a week ago today, he was swimming along, doing his job, making his changes, promoting his people, demoting the people that he didn't feel were doing it. And everything was going smooth. Now, all of a sudden, everything is going to have a tint to it because you decided to put it on and now you're saying to us we're putting his life on hold 
His life wouldn't have been put on hold if we didn't have this on the agenda, which you put on because you felt like putting it on, to try and jam it down our throats that we would do it. Man, it's not jamming. Yes, it City is. City managers told well, us. Well, then you look, at your, face, right look now, at your face. Look at your face all red because you're not getting your way. Man, $4,000. Why would we want to continue? My thing I said why pause it. Continue. I said pause it. Why I was the one who started off by saying pause it. Uh, fine. I have no uh, problem with that. And then no problem with well, that. Well, but you're saying, give him now. now. Give it to him now. Give it to him now. That's the way I felt. When I well, that's offer, fine. That was my whole intent. That's fine. That was. Well, so guess we what? You don't have agreement. Commissioner Simone. You're the one who put this in this position. I have no problem putting you in this position. Okay. Well. I You guys can come back. I'm just from a procedure perspective, you just have the motion on the floor right now related to the suspension of the search. I, I wasn't going to talk. Lori Hofer, formerly Lori Marrero. This is the problem. This is the problem. This is part of the problem with the police department. This is why they won't go to you if there's a problem, because they're afraid of what's going to happen with so much fighting. The bottom line is Mike Palm has been here as long as I have, okay? And he dealt with a lot too. And he decided that he wanted this police department to go back to where it was. Yeah, you made a promise to me, I remember, but you also promised that Joe would get fired too, and he did not. I sat there in the front row and you voted to keep him for six months. Knowing full well it would never happen. Okay, but that, that's not how I felt there. And what I went through- But, but what? I'm, and I'm going to stop the clock so I do not interrupt you. Only because I met with your chief from the, of Skirvin who asked me to do that, to save a man's career. And you knew that. And I have it in print. That's the only reason why I made that promise, because he walked in here and told me that was fine. To, or save, I would, to save a man's career who didn't care about mine. But that was what your PBA chief asked me to do. Well, I, I'm not here for that. I'm here to tell you that I've worked here for 28 years. I love this city, but this is part of the problem that the police department has. We were very broken, and he has stepped up and tried to make us what we used to be. He's actually making changes, making the women feel like we actually matter here and that we have opportunities here. I was on patrol. I went there. My people actually wanted to be here and felt that there was change and that things good were happening here. But this is what happens. How can he continue to, to make all these things and then you want to bring in someone from the outside? We don't know what we're going to get. We really don't. And you're going to kill succession here. You come here with, with the drive and the determination of the dream that maybe you will be the chief one day. That's succession. You have to put people in place. And we have so many good people, qualified people that are now moving up that can take his position one day when he's ready to leave here. That's what you want. You want people from within. You want the people that have grown up in this police department like I have. 28 years walking through these walls. I want to be here. I want to move up. I want to help run this agency and give these people a better police department to work for. We want people to come here. But you guys fighting and not standing together and not communicating doesn't make that possible for us. It makes it very difficult. So we need to come together. And yes, I 1,000% believe that Palma should be the police chief for the Margate Police Department. I believe in him wholeheartedly. He has done things. He has taken the initiative on things to actually give us hope again that we have lost for so many years. So he has my vote 100%. I just hope that you guys can come together and start to communicate, to talk, to not fight. It's an embarrassment. People are watching us on Zoom and they talk about our city. That embarrasses me because I work here. When I leave here, if I want another job, I'm gonna put the city of Margate on my resume. How do you think that makes me feel? We need to all be better together as a city, as a police department. We have to be better together as a team. Fighting, we're never gonna get anywhere. Nothing's ever gonna get accomplished. I know I'm running out of time. I don't wanna That's talk fine. fast like the last time. He has my vote. The police department supports him. We're here to support him. You need to support him too. Give him the opportunity to take us where we need to go. Thank you. Lori, so I can Thank you, Lori. Lori, so I can say something to you. Number one, so that everyone understands, when you see fighting up here, it's because we're not allowed to talk in any other place. But here, for the first time, we're not allowed to call each other and have any of these conversations. It's called the Sunshine Law. So what you see here is us hearing some of these things for the absolute first time. 
you're getting up and speaking, Sergeant Crabtree getting up and speaking. First time I've heard anything from the rank and file. First time tonight. So if you under, please don't yell out because they'll throw you out. So understand that when I say what I say, it's because I have not heard this before. He may have, that's great. They may have, that's great too. But this is the first time anybody's come to speak to me. And so I'm listening to you for the first time ever. But as far as what you hear arguing, that's because the Sunshine Law says we can't have a conversation on the phone any other way. And this is the first time we get to hear how each other feels about certain things. I'd just like to take one second. Hey, to wait, wait, let me give you the full time. Hold on a minute. Okay, I, I'm going to need a second, so whatever. Lieutenant William Snyder, you speak about hearing from the rank and file. Here I am as lieutenant, okay. part of the command staff, right? I've been on patrol now for a year. I work alpha shift. That's midnights. So when everybody here is sleeping, home with their families, feeling comfortable because Margate police are out there doing their job, I'm the guy that's leading them out there, okay? And I'm telling you that I am leading them under his direction. And you talk about when has anybody talked about the talk to the rank and file? When was the last time you come and spoken to me? I'm here. I'm here till four o'clock a.m. I'm up when till four somebody... o'clock a.m. Okay, so I implore you Everyone to come to my that. office, come into the lobby, and speak to me. But you want to talk about me having to come to you or any of you? That's absurd. If you guys are looking for answers, if you guys have questions, you come to us. We don't need to come to you and show you our support. We're showing you our support now. Here's your support. I work alpha shift. Have any of you spoken to any of the officers, the 12 officers, officers that work for me? No, you haven't. Why? Because you're sleeping when they're working. No, I'm not. Okay. okay, then prove it. Come talk to them. This man has our support. It's on you. Do your job just like we are doing our job, okay? Plain and simple. Our job is to protect you when you're awake, when you're asleep, whatever the case may be. Come talk to me. Come talk to my sergeants who work under me. Come talk to my officers. They're all going to tell you the same thing. I guarantee it. You know why? I have those conversations with them on a daily basis. And they are all in support of this man because camaraderie has changed. The overall attitude in this department has changed. Everything has changed. And yes, the small two, three month window, things have changed wholeheartedly. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Simone. I don't really know where to begin, but I don't like sitting up here and being attacked. And that's what I feel is happening tonight. What was on the agenda, and I think, uh, Lori, you are 100% correct. Lack of communication. And that's what's going on here tonight. On the agenda was to suspend the, um, the uh, search for the police chief. That was it. It was not whether we were going to hire or hire anybody. It was simply that one item. I wanted to speak to the rank and file to find out. I didn't want to believe one person over anybody else. Okay, I played phone tag with Brian Chavez, never got a hold of him. He called me, I called him back to get information from him and his voicemail was full, couldn't leave a message, never got a hold of him again, okay? I did speak to, um, I don't forget your, your first name, uh, Barnett, Burnett, Burnett. I did speak to him, but that's the only person I've spoken with. I did speak with Chief Palmer, but I felt like speaking to two people was not enough for me. I wanted to hear from the amount of people who came at the time that Chief Galaska uh, was up for discussion. I did not have that opportunity before tonight. So that's where I stay on this. I don't have a problem with suspending the uh, recruitment of the police chief, but I wanted to hear from you guys because you're on the front line. You know what's going on. 
and your voices are important to me. So from what I'm hearing tonight, there is full support. I can hear it from the chief. I can hear him telling me, yes, I have full support. I even asked if it was possible to have a vote of confidence for him because I wanted to hear from everybody on their opinion because I value everybody's opinion. So him telling me, yes, I have the support, of course, I can say, sit up here and I can say, well, as a commissioner, I have the support of the whole community too. That's not necessarily the truth until I hear from the residents, until I hear from you guys. And that's what's important to me. So that's where I stand on this issue. I have my answer tonight. This was not on the agenda to hire him this evening, but if it comes to that, Yes, I'm willing to do that because I've heard from the people in the departments that stand behind them. I stand behind him too, from what I understand. He has had no issues in the time that he's been with the department. He's as clean as a whistle. That stands for something. And like I said before, actions speak louder than words. Somebody can tell you something, but until you see it, and there have been actions that he has taken, I've now heard from two female police officers who say that things have changed for the betterment. There is not that discrimination that there was, that gender discrimination that there was before. So I think communication is a big part of this. Apparently, one person on the commission knew what this was all about. Nobody else did before tonight and before it got blown up like this. This should never have happened tonight. It should have been communicated clearly what exactly was going to occur tonight. And that did not happen. I take 100% responsibility for that. I asked this to be put on the agenda as written. The conversations that you guys have, I don't know what you had with the city manager. So if it was about suspending the contract, I wasn't aware. That was exactly what it but, was. But I'm just telling you, I asked that this be put on for the reason of talking about his employment. Never communicated but from us to us. Maybe maybe that's my fault then because maybe I didn't communicate it. That's what I wanted with the city manager. I asked that this be put on and the way it was communicated, I, I don't know, I'm not in the room with you guys. So I wouldn't blame him, I would blame me more than anybody. I just feel like we were blindsided tonight with all of this. And we were, I said we were blindsided with this tonight and I believe that we were attacked unnecessarily for something that we didn't need to be attacked for. You know, originally I said that I wanted more time, that I was not ready to make a decision tonight because I needed more time to speak with the officers. I didn't have time in the two days to do that. And that was my decision. But they're here tonight. A lot of them have gotten up and spoken. Okay. And I did reach out to a lot of them, and they did say, we will be there in support of the chief. So, so to me, I was still on the, the vision that it was discussing the chief. This was all about suspending the contract. And I asked, what would it cost us? And I heard we put in probably about $4,000. That was it. Okay. It was specifically told to me we would not be discussing hiring anybody tonight. And that's why you heard from me what you heard from me. You may have had something else in your mind, but if it would have said discussion and possible action of hiring or, com or changing it from interim, then I would have known. That's not what was communicated, and clearly I'm not the only one. Again, it's probably my fault because of the way it was written or interpreted to put it no on. No problem. And one well, other thing I want to say, you know, to the comment of why don't we come to you? Not allowed. I don't know. Well. We're not allowed, but that's besides the point. Not only that. But I don't know you. Okay, I've been up here a long time, and I guess, you know, maybe that's my fault, but I don't make it my business to reach out to you. Okay, Lori was sitting next to me at the uh, Employee Benefit Trust. I didn't even know who she was. She was sitting right next to me until she said her name. And then I said, oh, I said, it's nice to put a person, a name, to a face. So I don't reach out to you because I don't know you folks. I stay out of your business. I leave it up to the chief. 
we have been accused of having personal relationships with people calling us all the time to complain. That doesn't happen. But that's been used as an excuse for not talking to any of you to start with. So whereas I may know an awful lot of you, I would not go out of my way to put you on, on the spot to do that. Because I, you would probably wonder what purpose I had in doing so and who I was going to go back and tell. I don't play that game. Commissioner Rosario. Thank you. A <clears throat> couple of things. First, uh, I'm not going to sit here and play the blame game with anyone. I, I don't think there were any ill will intentions to force this down or whatever we, we may have heard. Um, I also don't think it's fair. I'm not attacking you, Commissioner Vice Mayor, but I don't think it's fair to say that he should have said something or insinuate that he knew stuff was going on. You know, part of the problem with the last chief was that people were skipping the chain of command. So you had a sergeant doing things that may or may not, they may or may not have, should have been doing. And when a lieutenant said, you got to do this, they would circle, circumvent them and go to the higher up. So following the chain of command, to me, is, I'll use your words, critically important. Obviously, if it's criminal in nature or immediate life safety thing, that's a different story. But I think day-to-day -day operations, you have to follow chain of command. I think what we saw tonight was definitely miscommunication. Again, I'm not, I'm not faulting anyone. But the way it was told to me was that this was simply to suspend the chief search and that we would not be entertaining any other discussions. To me, suspending the search is a step in the right direction, especially if you want to see Chief Palma up here. I like to think that I'm very accessible. I always talk about accessibility. The last two times we had an issue with the chief. I'd like to say I was probably one of the most vocal about it. And I'm not trying to pin anyone here, but I believe the last time there was an outcry, Commissioner and Simone were the ones that listened and took immediate action. So I do take a little offense to say that, you know, yes, I understand we're a team, but I, I don't think that we're all the problem here. Um, I also heard a comment that we've never met with people. I've met with a lot of officers. I've met with officers that work night shifts and it was very hard to accommodate them because of their schedule. When I was mayor, I had meetings with several officers, especially those with the union, that couldn't believe in the 10, 15, 20 years they've been here, no one's ever, no commissioners ever invited them to their office. I'm not saying I'm sure you all have met with people, but those officers in my office that night said that's never happened to them. So everybody knows that they can come to me if there's an issue. I, I'm telling you right now, all I thought tonight was going to be about was suspending the chief. Mm -hmm. The search. If, the search. Mm -hmm. if, I knew that, if I knew that we were going to be making a decision on the hiring, I would have reached out to more people. I mean, do a records request. I spoke to Drew Speck. It was the first person that hinted to me that this was going to happen. It was yesterday at 1,321 hours, 121. So in fairness, I didn't have time, again, to digest all of this. Um, you know, like Commissioner Simone said, uh, we, we've, I've listened to you all. I've heard from you, and I and I trust you in your recommendation. So I I would consider hiring Chief Palma. Um, there's still another step in the process, and that's the to come up with a contract should a motion arise tonight and pass. So I will support it, um, but I'm going to continue to talk to people, and if and if I hear things different than what I'm hearing tonight, uh, you know, I still have time to change my mind. But I, I will support it, 
but I just want you all to know that you can always reach out to me. And I, I had no clue that this is what we we're going to be discussing today. That's it. Thank you. Very welcome. Okay. So, David, the easiest way to do this would be to either pull the first one or. Well, I think you probably have a general consensus to suspend the search. Okay. That's been the motion that's currently on the table. Okay. So you may want to just Let's proceed that. with that one, and then you can, uh, we can move on to the next issue. Okay. Okay, so the motion on the table is to suspend the uh, investigate, uh, suspend the search. search. Suspend the search. Um, so we'll call a, a vote on that. We heard from the yeah. board, we heard from the public. Commissioner Caggiano? Yes. Commissioner Simone? Yes. Commissioner Arcerio? Yes. Vice Mayor Schwartz? Yes. Mayor Rosano? Yes. Now, if somebody would like to make a motion to maybe re look at Chief Palmer's contract at the next meeting and make him the chief, yeah, to be possibly the next one. I may be so bold. So I think your motion would be to direct the <coughs> city attorney uh, and City Manager possibly to negotiate a contract with uh, Interim Chief Palma to bring back to you at your next meeting. So would somebody like to make that I motion? Make that motion. Second. Thank you. And guys, again, I apologize tonight the way that this was presented. And um, Kel, I apologize. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. I'll open it up to the board. Public. I think they've said all they need. All the roll. Commissioner Caggiano? Mike, I'm going to wish you good luck. Yes. Commissioner Simone? Yes. Commissioner Osterio? Yes. Vice Mayor Schwartz? Because I've heard from the rank and file, yes. Mayor Rosano? Of course, yes. Great. So nice, thank you. <laughs> so, just, just for the record, so everyone understands, we'll negotiate a contract with uh, Interim Chief Palmer to bring back to you at your next meeting uh, for the position of Chief 